For almost two years, Qatar has been experiencing a blockade imposed by some of its nearest neighbours. But interestingly, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs says in some cases that blockade has been a blessing in disguise. TRT World spoke to Her Excellency Lolwa Rashid Al Khater, the official spokesperson for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, for this One on One Express. Your Excellency, thank you so much for making time to speak to TRT World One on One Express. We're going to start with the blockade. It's been in place now for almost two years, and yet the World Bank is still forecasting economic growth of about 3% for 2019 and 2020. How has the country maintained that sort of economic growth? Thank you for the invitation. Just as you stated, uh, all the indicators show that the Qatari economy is really flourishing. Uh, what many people don't realize is that uh, Qatar went through a reform in its uh, policies and public institutions uh, from the year almost uh, 2000. And the blockade was a test to how effective those reforms were. And indeed, I think we have passed uh, the test. Economy aside, a survey was released in February which found that people are now more comfortable to talk about politics and to engage in free speech since the blockade. Do you think that the blockade has sparked some unintended social change as well? This is very accurate, I would say. We keep saying in Qatar that this blockade has been a blessing in disguise. Now, in terms of the blockade itself and the dynamics that further fostered this uh, uh, freedom of expression, I would say that two elements came into play. One of them is probably subconscious, because let's remember that the essence of this blockade, at least from our perspective, has been about multiplicity of opinions. If we all recall, one of the demands, the main demands of the blockading countries has been to shut down Al Jazeera and other media outlets. So I guess for us as Qataris, whether we're decision makers or just normal people, we felt that this um, multiplicity of opinion, commitment to freedom of expression is becoming part of our national identity and national sovereignty. And this was a reaction. Let's move on now to the World Cup. The United Arab Emirates has recently come out and said that it is willing to step up and help Qatar host the 2022 World Cup if it can't do it on its own. Is this show of good faith just a veiled attempt to undermine Qatar's event? It's very difficult to judge uh, their intentions, especially under the current uh, mm. circumstances. However, I would like to remind everyone that Qatar's bid from the very beginning was about a World Cup for our region, the Middle East, the Arab region, a region that has been always disadvantaged. And this is still, by the way, our commitment. If FIFA does expand the number of teams competing, would Qatar be willing to share with uh, the United Arab Emirates? And if so, how do you do that when the two countries are so opposed? Well, I mean, first of all, this is a very hypothetical question and we prefer to wait for the uh, results to come out. But as you uh, rightly have uh, put it, I mean, currently we don't have any diplomatic ties. So under these circumstances, I, it's very difficult just to imagine a World Cup between the two countries. Staying on the World Cup, uh, in February, Amnesty International released its latest report saying that time is running out for Qatar to deliver on its promised labour reforms. And despite the fact that there have been some considered uh, progress, FIFA has acknowledged that more needs to be done. What's taking so long? Absolutely. I mean, Melinda, what's taking so long is that this is a very complicated process. Yet, we have publicly welcomed those remarks. As a matter of fact, on a regular basis, we engage with human rights organisations to make sure that we put the right checks and balances in place. However, this process takes very long. It's very complicated. Recently, we have signed uh, an uh, MOU with uh, uh, the ILO, the International Labour Organization, and accordingly, we have opened an office for them in Qatar to make sure that they work with us very closely, not only to set a model for, uh, for uh, Qatar and Qatari institutions, but also for the region. Your Excellency, thank you so much for making time to speak to TRT World. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.